And welcome back folks to Both Sides Now where we get some cracking stories behind brilliant songs. Now on the sofa with me today we have a lady who's travelled the world, settled in Cornwall and then came to Belfast here today to tell us her great story. You're very, very welcome, Sarah McQuaid. Thank you so much, Ona. <laughs> it's lovely to be here. Um, I'm so glad you made it up today because I know you were coming from, from Wicklow. Um, so you've been on tour recently and yeah. you've been uh, touring around doing your new album, isn't that correct? Or you, Yes, that's right. And you were telling me earlier you had written this album as a result of COVID and coming out of those isolation period, is, is, isn't that correct? Well, yeah, the whole genesis came about because of COVID. I was on tour in Germany when COVID hit and we had to cut the tour short and rush home before all the borders closed and everything like that. Wow. And and then it was kind of like, well, what do we do now? Because I, I was supposed to have had another three full months of really solid touring and suddenly that was all gone. And I'd been thinking for a long time about making a live album because right. I thought, I've always felt like there's something that comes out in a live performance when you're on stage and you've got the whole excitement of the gig that just doesn't come out in a, in a studio yes. uh, setting. You know, there's, there's just a certain magic to it. And, and I said to my wonderful manager, who's also my sound engineer, who also produced the album, I said, uh, Martin, what are we going to do? We can't make a live album now because, we, you know, we can't do gigs. And he said, well, what about we set up like we're doing a live performance, but without the audience? And mm -hmm. since we don't have the audience, we can film the whole thing and get a camera crew in and do a really good job of filming it with good production values and everything like that. And then we can release videos and that can be your way of staying in contact right. with people. Because I didn't really, I didn't want to do the live streaming thing because I just, I, I find know. that a quite a lonely experience. Yeah, you sort of sing into yourself. You know, we spend I enough time looking at screens, don't we? We have a, a clip of, of one of your videos. So maybe mm. you could talk us through this particular track and, and what's going on here. Um, it'll mean it looks beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. The the track I see the track we're seeing now. It's got to be one of the piano ones. So it's it's going to be either the silence above us or rabbit. Sorry. Uh, sorry, folks. The audio isn't coming through. But um, where it, where are you there? It looks absolutely stunning. I am. So in, do you? Oh, thank you. I'm in Saint Burian Church, which is this beautiful medieval church, just up the road from where I live in far west Cornwall. Uh -huh. I live kind of between Penzance and Land's End, so it's way down there, but there's this gorgeous church, and I knew it was a beautiful space to sing in and play in, because I, I, I sing in the choir there, and I also sing in a local community choir that rehearses in the church, and I've been asked to sing at a few weddings and funerals sure. and things. So I knew it was a beautiful building to sing in, and I knew it was just lovely visually. So I thought, what better place to film a live album and, and where we can actually... Um, you know, have something to focus on besides me, but also I felt like the building itself would provide some of the magic that the audience would have provided if there had been an audience that there. That was going to be my next question, because obviously when you're doing gigs and live music, um, you feed off your audience, you get an yeah. awful lot back, an awful lot of the energy back from them. Yeah. So you find then that gorgeous atmospheric space provided a wee bit of that because of it course did. you're going to have natural reverberation and everything anyway mm. it's sort of going to be that big old sound or yeah. did you find even when you were doing that still there was still a you know I know you're trying to recreate a live was there still a certain emptiness to it or a, you know well there was kind of a sublime emptiness that's to it. it that's it it was almost like do you know if you're playing in a big venue um, you're, you're a singer yourself so you probably know this if you're in a big venue sometimes the lights are so strong that in front of you, you there's just the this no, there's just this velvety blackness. But you know the people are out there, yes. and you know they're listening, and that can be really kind of lovely. You almost feel enveloped by this yeah. blanket of darkness. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. lovely, and uh, and and I felt a bit like that. I felt like I could sense the people, and you know, and and I had the film crew in there, and I had Martin, and Martin also did this wonderful thing where he put little pairs of microphones all around the space to capture the natural acoustic wow. of the building. So you get this lovely sense of the vast space and also close mic to me so you get the, the intimacy at the same time sure. as the spaciousness. Fantastic. And it was a great way to do an album mm. and I'm, I'm so glad that we did it. And how lucky for you that you were able to fill those two awful years with something lovely and creative and, and 
you know, because yeah. funny, we've had so many uh, ladies come in and tell us, that, and I'm going to ask you this as well. Um, when COVID hit, they maybe had just made a career change into full time music or whatever. And then, of course, COVID hit and the music industry, as we know, just stopped. Mm. And so many of them questioned themselves, have I made the right decision? What did I do giving up my my day job? Um, you know, you know, those just doubts that just crept into everybody. You know, why am I doing this anyway? You yeah. know, blah. did you have any of those? No, I mean, I, I, I suppose because it, it's a, I gave up my day job in 2007. Right. So I've been full time at the music for a long time. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and prior to COVID, I actually almost was feeling like like this is going to be this is going to be the big, this is going to be my year. I'm going to do, go and do all that because I had so much touring lined up. Sure. And so it was a really crushing disappointment to lose the touring. It was a crushing disappointment to lose the income. Yeah. We really, really struggled yeah. um, through COVID. But uh, I, I always, I, you know, it never occurred to me not to do it. And then I, was, I, was, I got great support to great encouragement in order to be able to do the album and to hire in a film crew and everything like that, it was all it was a pretty expensive project to take on. And, yeah. you know, obviously I wanted to pay everybody properly who was involved. And so I did a crowdfunder. Oh, really? And I got so much support from um, I hate the word fans, but, you know, <laughs> people who love my music. Yeah, sure. Really, really, really um, went. I mean, some of them just contributed huge amounts. Well, that's fantastic. And, and then some contributed really small amounts and said, this is all I can afford. I'm really sorry. I can, I can, I can give you 10 quid, you know. Yeah. And, this, and, and that almost means more than somebody giving 500 quid because this person who gave 10 quid, maybe that was 10 quid they would have spent, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it's to get that encouragement to know that all those people who were out there rooting for me and supporting me and wanting me to keep making music. I also started up a Patreon uh, site, which is something yes. I'd never done mm -hmm. before, but it, suddenly when COVID came along, it was like, okay, I've got to know that the bills are paid. And a lot of people, um, you know, came on board supporting me yeah. on, on Patreon and still are supporting me on Patreon. That's because so it's encouraging still tough for times. you. I mean, I'm so glad. I mean, it's so yeah. encouraging because I've heard. I've heard completely the opposite, you know, of, of that story. Um, so many times that people come in and sit in the sofa and they say, you know, very nearly that they just nearly threw everything out the window yeah. and decided that's it. I'm not. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. You no. Know? In, a, in a way, it was kind of reassuring. It was like, okay, yeah, no, this, this. It was. It was kind of a good opportunity. You know, I, not that I wish for one second that sure. it, it had. I mean, I mean, I wish it hadn't happened. Yes. But given the, the 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 sort of the silver lining in the cloud was that. It gave me a chance to kind of sit back and reflect on the whole thing. Right. It gave me a chance to make that album. It cemented my <laughs> kind of relationship with with all my friends and supporters, and um, and I got I got some great support from the Arts Council as well. Mm -hmm. I got what's called a Developing Your Creative Practice yes. grant, which is a grant that allowed me to. I decided I really wanted to to do some proper formal music composition study, which I had never done before. And, um, and also to improve my kind of home recording uh, equipment and, and technique. Yeah, they and were fantastic with that. us here as well yeah. in Northern Ireland, I have to say. They, they, they really rallied, didn't they, the, the arts councils? Yes. I think they really did the business. So I can't thank them enough, really, for, oh, for some yeah. of the things they did. So, Sarah, <clears throat> this show, I know you know this now, but... Do you know when you're on stage and uh, you maybe have a certain amount of time or maybe you're doing a radio interview mm. and uh, you have your seven questions to get through and you don't always get a chance to tell the story that's behind the song. And lots and lots and lots of times um, people think a song is about one thing and of course you and you are the only person really who knows what the song's about. So both sides now is where we get both sides of the story. So we're going to hear your beautiful performance later. But I would like you to tell me what was the story behind that particular song. So. What's the name of the song and what's the story behind it? The name of the song is Yellowstone. Yellowstone. And the story behind it is that my son was 10 at the time. I know this because I say it in the song. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I probably wouldn't remember. It, it was a long time ago I wrote this, but um, my son was having trouble sleeping because he was lying awake and worrying about all sorts of different things. And uh, I said to him, why don't you try just writing down your worries on bits of paper and then the worries can be on the paper and not in your head. Because sure. this was something that had worked for me. Anytime yes. I was worried about things, I'd just get a pad of paper and just write everything down and then say, right, I've got it out. 
now I can sleep. And that, of course, that worked for him really uh-huh. well. But being his mother, <laughs> I had to go and look at the bits of paper where he'd written down all of the things he was worried about. And one of the things he was worried about was the underground volcano under Yellowstone yeah. National oh, Park. Is it, um, old Faithful? Yeah, no, that's, I think that's, is, oh no, maybe it is Old Faithful. I, I can, I get my, okay. <laughs> my National Parks confused. But yeah, there's this great big, there's, the, basically there's a huge kind of underground volcano under the whole thing, kind yeah. of burbling away under the surface. And he'd read somewhere that if that were to erupt, then that could set off a big chain reaction of oh, volcanoes all around the globe. And he was worrying and about that at 10. This would be the apocalypse, you know, this would be the end of the world, all these volcanoes erupting. And, 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 and I, thought, I thought that was a wonderful image, but I also thought it was such a great metaphor, the, the kind of the, the simmering under the surface, this thing that you're afraid of, you know, walking across, you know, you're... Sure. Um, there's a line in the song. I, I I know I'm not the only one to fear the ground I tread upon. You yeah. know, to, yeah, yeah. The, the, these things that we're all worried is situations that are kind of burbling away that we're scared they could erupt at any minute, and and uh, and cause all kinds of all kinds of problems. And we're just kind of hoping. Hoping that it Nothing all works. stays nice and smooth and it doesn't... You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know absolutely what you're talking about. And actually, our conversation before it sort of feeds into it. We're all just moving along, not walking, trying not to walk on the eggshells. Mm. And then COVID happens, which is exactly the oh, yeah. the, the crack that you're, you're, you're trying yeah. not to not to have there as well. Yeah. Okay, that's... I'm um, so glad. A, a lot of the times when people tell me the story behind um, the song Text Life. So I heard you in Soundcheck. Um, and I'm going to find this really interesting now because of course now I know what the story is behind so <laughs> yeah. I often find it's amazing it's like nearly night and day when you tell the story behind the song how oh, the story just takes life in front of your in front of your eyes so um, Sarah McQuaid take you. her away The sun can't sleep Ten years old, he's scared that Yellowstone will blow. And when it does, it could set up a mighty chain reaction. Volcanoes round the world exploding, darkened skies and land for flowing. His mind won't let it go. Ten years old, I try to tell him not to worry. There's no point in dwelling on the things we can't control, especially when we're ten years old. I try to tell him how the chances are so small that circumstances. Will combine to trigger that eventuality, and he looks back at me. He says, "I know how fit, but even so, my mind won't let it go."
much. You. you were telling me earlier that you were born in Spain. I, you're getting a big Spanish tone out of your guitar there. I can hear this <laughs> lovely flamenco thing come through. That was that was lovely, actually, and I'm really glad I heard the story behind it because you could hear the whole depth of the thing. Oh, thank you. What age is he now, Just? Is he still afraid of he it? He is now... Um, he's just about to turn 19 years not. old, would you believe? And and he's studying archaeology now, which is really funny because there's another song that I wrote that he inspired called If We Dig Any Deeper, It Could Get Dangerous, which is which was inspired by him digging a great big huge hole in the back garden of our house. So I always get a laugh when I do that one on stage live and I say, and he's studying archaeology now. Oh, very good. Even. There you go. So um, if anybody wanted to find you, where, what's your web address or where will people find you? It's sarahmcquaid.com. That's S-A-R-A-H. M-C-Q-U-A-I-D.com. And that's up on screen now, folks. Oh, and so lovely. you're going to come in back to our lovely shores quite soon for another tour, isn't that I correct? am, yeah, in January, February, late January, early February. I'll, I'll be back this way again, which I'm really looking forward to. Fantastic. It's a lovely part of the world to come to. Maybe you'll call in and do another one for us. That would be fantastic. It's been great having you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much, See you again. Good luck with the album. Good luck with the tour. And thanks to Cormac and all the fellas in the back room. They, do you know Thank what? They're you. unsung heroes, aren't they? Yeah. They're sitting here in our ears and no one knows what indeed. goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> thanks very much. Thank you. That's it for today, folks. Uh, thank you very much. And join us again for another Both Sides Now. Hello, my little friend Take it all away Release the tension in me Let my troubles float away